So, in the previous lecture, we looked at effects of low turbulence Reynolds numbers. Now, this low turbulence Reynolds number can occur close to the wall, that is one type uh, uh, of situation, but it can also occur along the length of a of a flat plate where the boundary layer is growing, uh, where the laminar flow turns turbulent uh, through an intermediate region, which is which we normally define as the as the transitional region. And in that transitional region, again, uh, the the turbulence Reynolds number would tend to be low, and, and therefore the models that we just discussed are very much applicable to such situations. But as I said, these turbulence models with roll turbulence Reynolds number require uh, fairly heavy computation expense because of the very large number of grid nodes required close to a wall, uh, and and, uh, and therefore uh, at earlier times uh, simpler approaches to modeling uh, transitional region regime were adopted, and my uh, purpose uh, for the in this lecture is to really look at laminar to, to turbulent transition in a little bit more detail. The second issue uh, concerns rough wall. So, much of our discussion till now has been about smooth walls, but uh, in engineering uh, in order to enhance heat transfer we often employ rough walls deliberately structured or naturally rough walls. Uh, uh, and we want to see uh, how to capture the effect of a rough wall uh, in, a, in, in a either in a wall function or, or a, uh, ultimately in a uh, in generating the universal law of the wall for for uh, for the inner layer of a turbulent boundary layer on a rough wall. Uh, and finally, we'll look at uh, like we derived the universal uh, uh, velocity law for the inner layer. I, is there a temperature law? for uh, the inner layer and that is what we will these are the three topics we will take up in this lecture. So, for example, in a duct when Reynolds number based on hydraulic diameter or in, in an external boundary layer when the Reynolds number based on actual disk in x is increased laminar flow undergoes transition before turning into fully turbulent one. This transitional Reynolds uh, phenomenon occurs actually occurs over a range of Reynolds number, uh, although in the undergraduate work we often believe that uh, uh, laminar to turbulent transition is very abrupt, but uh, actually the transition occurs over a range of Reynolds numbers. Uh, although the range is very, very small compared to the normal values of uh, uh, fully turbulent Reynolds numbers that, that we normally encounter. But nonetheless, the range exists, uh, uh, and, and we are going to account. Uh, we, we, we want to know how to account for that that range. Uh, the The lower end of the uh, range of Reynolds number uh, indicates end of laminar conditions, whereas the upper limit of the range uh, signifies establishment of fully turbulent conditions. And both F and N U. Uh, demonstrate unique features in the transitional layer. For example, you will recall that uh, uh, the friction factor in a pipe, for example, uh, uh, decreases linearly in a uh, uh, up to Reynolds number of let us say about 2300, and then the friction factor actually increases a little to say till about Reynolds number of 5000 and then the uh, so this is the fully turbulent this is fully laminar and in the in the transitional region here the friction factor Reynolds number relation is quite reverse of what happens in the laminar and turbulent regions in that friction factor actually increases with Reynolds number and therefore, this curious phenomenon needs to be explained in somewhat greater detail. Now, many heat exchange equipment 
operate in the transitional region, particularly in process industries. This is often found that the Reynolds number inside the tube uh, is often uh, in the transitional region. Similarly, on a gas turbine blade, the pressure gradient varies in the range uh, as low as minus 10 to the minus 8 to uh, of this parameter rho by u infinity square du infinity by d by to as high as 10 raise to minus 5. Both these are considering both pressure side and the suction side and the free strip turbulence intensity is vary from as low as 2 percent to 10 percent. Now, in these conditions transitional range of R e x may well occupy as much as 50 percent of the core of the blade. What is meant here is for example, in a flat blade uh, initially you will get laminar flow and then a, a small transitional regime with uh, x and then x transition n and then you will get a turbulent boundary. So, this, this occupies a much smaller length of the total uh, length of a boundary layer, but on a turbine blade the this is the chord this is the chord length and you could get a uh, transitional Reynolds number as in uh, uh, transitional range occupying almost 50 percent of the chord length. So, that is why uh, we need to study turbulence somewhat in uh, a, a transitional region in, in somewhat more carefully. So, now let us first of all get our ideas of uh, transition in a pipe flow cleared. So, in a pipe flow if for Reynolds number 2300 f increases with, uh, with Reynolds number and if you were to measure u velocity at a fixed point uh, in the flow at any radius of the, of the pipe. Uh, then you will see a picture something like this. A flow will be uh, show turbulence for a while at a point, then for a certain period it will be quite quiet uh, or laminar like, then it will be turbulent again, then it will be very quiet again, then turbulent and then so on and so forth. If we measure this for a certain total time and divide this time period equally in uh, in uh, 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 in steps of delta t then in each delta t uh, a, a small uh, fraction of it delta t sub t delta t sub t would be occupied by turbulent uh, patch uh, likewise here this much would be the delta t t whereas this is the total is delta t now, we define intermittency as, uh, so intermittency itself is defined as gamma delta t uh, of turbulent patch divided by the total time step delta t uh, and this would be the kth patch let us say and then if we sum up all this over k equal to 1 to n uh, time steps and divide this by n, then that is called the intermittency. This is the intermittency definition. It tells you about the fraction of the time uh, for which uh, the turbulent patches occur. Now, obviously, it would it can only be vary between 0 and 1 and that is what I have shown here that intermittency gamma would vary from 0 to 1. Now, of course, it would uh, the value of the gamma would vary in a pipe flow from axis to the wall at different points, but usually we speak of uh, some kind of an average gamma. So, we do not worry about the radial variation too much. Here is what I show the value of average gamma. Uh, versus uh, x by d of the pipe flow at different actual distances. This is the measurement made at uh, Reynolds number of 2300 and you will see that uh, uh, the intermittency does not exceed 0 0.2 uh, 
uh, even after going well beyond 500. So, in this case uh, the flow will never turn turbulent at all uh, in practical lengths of pipes which would be usually 100 d uh, or 200 d at best, uh, but flow will become fully turbulent at very very long distance from the entrance. At 2400 x by d of 500 it has reached about 0 0.4, but at 2500 you will see it has reached about 0 0.8 and at 2600 it has reached almost 1 at x by d of 500. Now, if you had a Reynolds number of 5000 then of course, it will reach uh, the fully turbulent uh, a gamma equal to 1 in a very very short distance and it is such flows that we say are turbulent right from the inlet itself. Between 2300 and 5000 5, uh, the transitional flow will continue for all practical lengths of the pipes, but for 5000 and above uh, the, the, the flow will be turbulent right from the inlet itself uh, in, a, in a pipe flow. Similarly, if you were to look at the external boundary layer you will see the flow is coming from the left. Uh, then uh, uh, there will be laminar layer here with gamma equal to 0, but then from here to here uh, which is the start of transition to end of transition intermittency will go on increasing uh, with distance. How it will increase we will see shortly and then uh, fully turbulent conditions will be reached here uh, at gamma equal to 1. Pictorially, if I were to look at the plan of this, it will look like this. Uh, if the flow is coming in from here, uh, you will get very steady uh, flow up to start of transition. Then, occasional spots of turbulence will be seen and then tend to grow, engulfed by laminar fluid, which kills the, the spots. But it is this energy transfer which gives rise to new spots of turbulence uh, and, uh, uh, and they would grow, but they are again engulfed by uh, laminar fluid, surrounded by laminar fluid and therefore, they get killed, but the process of energy transfer creates more spots and so on and so forth and ultimately uh, they grow not only in number, but also in strength and ultimately at uh, at the end of transition you will get a completely turbulent boundary layer or the turbulent fluid. So, the transition is identified with the occurrence of intermittent turbulent spots surrounded by laminar fluid in an external. This is quite visible you can do a flow visualization experiment to, to see this. Variation of intermittency with x in a boundary layer has been correlated and the one of the first correlations was by uh, Rodam Narsima, an Indian scientist uh, working at Indian Institute of Science, uh, and uh, it was 1 minus exponential of uh, minus 412 beta square, where beta itself is, is a dimensionless quantity x minus start of transition divided by x, where the value of intermittency is 0 0.75 minus x, where the value of intermittency is 0 0.25. Now, this is of course very well to use in a in an experimental setup because you can you can see where the intermittency is, is 0 0.75 and 0 0.25 and therefore determine the uh, denominator quite exactly computationally uh, this is not very convenient and therefore more recently in the 80s abu ghanam and shaw have come up with this expression gamma equal to 1 minus exponential of minus pi times xi cubed where xi is x minus x t s divided by end of transition minus uh, start of transition. So, all that remains is uh, uh, finding uh, ways to determine x t s and x t e and this is there are several suggestions. So, for example, for determining uh, start of transition where there is a sudden departure in laminar variations of delta c f x and stanton x one can uh, uh, Sibesi uh, is one author, Fraser is another author. So, Sibesi has suggested that uh, at transition at the start of transition the Reynolds number based on momentum thickness delta 2 
is uh, uh, balanced by this expression where the Reynolds number x is based on uh, start of transition. So, what one does is uh, uh, if you were doing let us say applying integral method or uh, uh, then during the laminar flow you will uh, calculate R e x and R e delta 2 and see whether the that expression that I showed you is actually satisfied. Uh, you will see at a certain point x t s the the R e x and R e delta 2 would be related by uh, this expression and that would identify the start of transition. On the other hand, uh, this expression of course, does not take into account the effects of turbulence intensity, which can vary quite a bit particularly in gas turbine and compressor applications. And therefore, Fraser has suggested this formula uh, R e delta 2 s is related to this f m and turbulence intensity t u and m is the pressure gradient parameter and includes d u infinity by d x. So, when this equation uh, you go on calculating R e delta 2 s and when it matches with this for m greater than 0 and m less than 0, then uh, you say that is the start of transition. m equal to 0 of course, make it uh, f m equal to 6.91 itself. If turbulence intensity is not accounted and taken at 0, then this is simply exponential of 6.91 plus 163 and you take the, the value of x t s where r e delta 2 is 163 into exponential of uh, 6.91 for zero pressure gradient boundary layer and turbulence intensity equal to 0. But for all other cases, the x t s must respond to the pressure gradients. Now, how about end of transition? For end of transition, uh, you would uh, say uh, you define R e sigma as u infinity x t e minus x t s divided by nu. So, it is based on the the, the transitional length if you like uh, R e sigma. R e sigma naught is uh, a function only of the turbulence intensity 4.6 into 1 plus 1710 m raise 2.1.4 1 uh, into all this. Of course, this, this term is valid only when m is greater than 0, which means that term is negative and that would occur in, in an adverse pressure gradient. We can locate uh, the end of transition in, in the adverse pressure gradient as would be expected. So, this is the recommendation of Fraser and Milne uh, and the paper was published in 1986 in institution of engineers proceedings. There is another uh, recommendation and that is by Sibesi who say that R e sigma which is based on uh, transitional length should be uh, when it equals 60 times R e x t s which was identified uh, on the previous slide R e x t s raised to 2 by 3 then that would signify the end of transition. And then there is yet another one which is by Deutsch and Zirke which again does not take into account turbulence intensity, but they recommend that the end of transition R e delta 2 at end of transition should satisfy this expression where now instead of m uh, which was based on uh, like m which was based on delta 2 square du infinity by dx here also you see this is really m uh, 1 plus m at start of transition. So, that is the most important part this is at the value of start of transition. So, there are three expressions particularly in adverse pressure gradients uh, all of these work very well. If you wanted to use the integral method for solution of the integral equation through the transitional layer, you would need u over u infinity in the transitional layer. Now, simply by observing how the experimental data look like. So, this is uh, u over u infinity divided by y given in inches here. In the transitional region, uh, the profile would go something like that. Uh, as the R e x increases uh, and here R e x increases in this fashion and finally, you would end up with a fully turbulent profile like that. 
in u plus y plus coordinates it would appear something like this and it is quite customary therefore, to say that u over u infinity at transition would be 1 minus gamma times u over u infinity laminar plus gamma times u over u infinity uh, turbulent. So, having uh, identified the values of x t s and x t e you can determine the gamma distribution with respect to x and therefore, you can use this formula and this is pure pragmatism there is no no big theory, but it seems to work this kind of pragmatism and actually predicts a uh, transitional boundary layer quite well uh, in uh, using integral method. So, now we turn to how to account for effect of wall roughness. Now, effect of wall roughness uh, uh, as you will recall even from your undergraduate days we are, when the roughness height divided by the diameter is uh, 0.001 then we say that the tube is uh, smooth and you will get this kind of profile for smooth uh, pipe turbulent region. But and this would have the height roughness y r of d less than 0.001. But if you increase y r by d then you will remember that uh, you get friction factor which goes on like that. So, much so that you may even get that and this is where the roughness is increasing. So, the effect of roughness is to enhance the friction factor or the really the pressure drop and this is what is observed uh, in experimental data that you will recall from your undergraduate days. We want to explain how what are the other features of rough rough surface. For example, a cement pipe is quite rough quite naturally, but many a times in uh, as shown here. So, it will have a, a jagged surface experimentally such a surface is produced by pasting sand grains on the of various sizes on on a surface uh, of uh, uh, equivalent or, or average height y sub r. But uh, many times we actually have a rough surface which is deliberately structured by providing ribs for example, like this or studs uh, three dimensional studs can be provided uh, of width w and pitch p and it becomes quite difficult then to uh, develop any universal law for uh, surfaces like this. So, in order to circumvent this difficulty what is done is we always take sand grain roughness as a benchmark and determine the friction coefficient for that and for a structured surface if the friction coefficient agrees with that of the sand grain roughness then we say that the structured surface had an equivalent roughness height equal to the sand grain roughness height. So, sand grain roughness uh, are done in a laboratory measurements uh, and uh, they provide the benchmark. What we would expect is near the law near wall law to be u plus now to be not only function of distance from the wall y plus, but also the y r plus the, the roughness height. And since we do not expect much of a laminar contribution we will essentially have a, a turbulent layer developing and therefore, we expect that u plus would be 1 over kappa l n y plus a uh, plus c which would be function of the roughness height y r plus. Usually, laminar sub layer does not exist when y r plus is greater than 70 and we say such a surface is fully rough surface, but if y, y r plus is less than 70 then you can still get effects of uh, a viscosity present uh, and uh, we have to account for those. So, that is what we have done in the next slide. So, here is a plot of C r uh, which is a function of y r plus uh, and the sand grain roughness data uh, was generated by 
a, a person called Nikuradze, a very well known scientist from Soviet Union. And it is quoted, this data is quoted in the book by Schlichting uh, called The Boundary Layer Theory, uh, about which I mentioned even in the, during the laminar boundary layer discussion. So, you will find CR uh, versus log 10 of IR plus when it is perfectly linear and rising, it is a perfectly smooth surface. IR plus itself is very, very low uh, and therefore, it is not really a rough surface. So, we say up to here the surface is smooth. Uh, then the effect of roughness begins to come in, uh, but CR would then decline and uh, uh, up to about say log y r plus to the base 10 of about 1.8, which is really y plus y r plus above 70. And then it is found that the experimental data remains really constant with increasing y r plus. So, this is taken as the, uh, as the indicator of the fully rough surface and C r value for that is 8.48. So, for a discrete roughness, in equivalent sand grain roughness y r e is defined and we say u plus will be equal to 1 over kappa l n y by y r plus c r dash and the equivalent roughness height then would be y r exponential kappa into 8.48 minus c r dash, where c r dash is a function of the width of the rib or, or the pitch of the rib and is determined experimentally. So, that is how one would get the universal law of the wall for a for a given structured surface. One can also modify the mixing length uh, here that instead of y plus one would now take y plus plus delta y naught plus a divided by a plus and likewise instead of y we would take here y plus delta y naught and delta y naught is is correlated in this way by K's and Reynolds. This approach is no longer used now, but nonetheless uh, it provided excellent measurements, uh, excellent predictions which compared with, uh, with experimental data very well. Finally, we turn to near wall heat transfer and like we developed the law of the wall for velocity from phenomenology, where we postulated uh, U as a function of, here we will say T minus T W the wall temperature is going to be a function of firstly y tau wall mu and rho which really determine the four things which really determine the, the, the velocity profile and in addition now you will have a q wall because that would determine the temperature gradient at the wall. C p is the specific heat of the fluid and k the conductivity of the fluid and therefore, if one carries out the dimensional analysis one would find that a quantity T plus quite unusual looking, but what you have here is a T plus equal to minus T minus T w over Q w into rho C p u tau. T plus would be function of y plus uh, Prandtl number and Q w plus. Q w plus is really Q over rho u tau q and that is really the, the, the effect of uh, friction at the wall which generates heat, but usually compared to the actual heat transfer this term is very, very small and therefore, it is it is not of great relevance. Uh, effect of that can be taken up through property variations at a later time, but uh, therefore, this term is really dropped and we say that uh, T plus will be a function of Y plus N Prandtl only. Uh, so, let us see what does the form F y plus Prandtl will take uh, uh, in different layers of the inner layer. Now, uh, to generate the T plus law, we first of all look at the differential equation where we say that uh, for a smooth impermeable wall at any rate, uh, the convection term will be very, very small and therefore, the total diffusion of uh, heat flux would be equal to 0 or essentially q total divided by rho C p would equal q wall divided by rho C p equal to minus alpha d t by d y plus v plus prime t prime and all this would be equal to a constant. In the sub layer q wall over rho C p will be minus alpha d t by d y. Yes, q 
in the laminar sublayer q wall over rho c p would be equal to minus alpha d t by d y and therefore, uh, and q wall is constant. So, if I integrated that I will get t minus t wall equal to um, uh, q wall minus q wall uh, y divided by uh, rho c p into alpha. Uh, uh, now, if I said that the minus t minus t w uh, divided by q wall divided by rho c p uh, would be equal to uh, uh, y by alpha and if I divide this by u tau here, then this will be u tau and this is nothing but the definition of t plus and that will be equal to y uh, uh, by nu u tau into nu divided by alpha and therefore, this is nothing but our y plus and this is parental number. So, in the laminar sublayer, it is straightforward to show that T plus would be equal to parental times y plus and parental times y plus is also equal to parental times u plus. So, laminar sublayer is fairly clear. Now, in the turbulent layer, uh, which is characterized by 30 in uh, a maximum of 30 and 30 parental number less than y plus and less than 0.2 delta plus or the thermal thickness would be determined by the parental number in the uh, in the intermediate transition and uh, sublayer regions and therefore we take maximum of 30 to 30 parental to 2 delta plus which is the end of the transitional layer the relationship dt by dy would uh, read as dt by dy equal to q wall over rho c p u tau equal to d f by d y plus into d y plus by d y which is u tau by nu and this expression must be independent of nu which gives me that d f by d y plus must be equal to d t plus by d y plus equal to now we say 1 over kappa t y plus or t plus equal to 1 over kappa t ln y plus all this for a fixed parental number and therefore, the constant of integration here C t would be a function of parental number and kappa t turns out to be kappa divided by 0.9 uh, uh, equal to 0.44. In the fully turbulent layer, you will again get a logarithmic law for the temperature. In the laminar sublayer, you will get uh, this. The transition region is, is somewhat complicated, not easy to define, but the two laws that we have got t plus equal to y plus into parental for laminar sublayer and t plus equal to 1 over kappa t uh, times ln y plus plus c t parental for the turbulent layer. These two laws suggest that it is possible to generalize this as t plus equal to sigma times u plus uh, plus p f. Now, to understand this uh, consider the turbulent law for example, the turbulent law says that t plus the turbulent law says t plus is, is equal to 1 over kappa t ln y plus plus c t parental, but the u plus is 1 over kappa ln y plus plus c which is our, our 5.4 if you remember. So, I can substitute for ln y plus here then I will say t plus equal to uh, kappa over kappa t u plus minus 5.4 plus c t parental uh, or another way of writing is uh, k or uh, kappa over kappa t into u plus plus uh, another 
a quantity called uh, um, C T parental uh, divided by parental T uh, or kappa over kappa T uh, minus 5.4 divided by kappa over kappa T. And if I were to call this quantity P f for the timing, then you will see this and if I call this to be sigma or uh, then it will look like sigma u plus plus P f. Similarly, in the laminar sublayer, you had T plus equal to parental y plus is also equal to parental u plus. So, I can write this as parental times u plus plus 0 and say that this sigma is now parental number, the laminar parental number. So, it is possible to generalize both these laws by an expression like so t plus u plus plus p f, where p f and sigma take different values in different layers. So, we are going to say now that this kind of representation T plus equal to sigma u plus plus p f applies across from laminar sublayer onwards to, uh, to fully turbulent layer provided we represent uh, we interpret sigma correctly and p f correctly. Now, sigma which is kappa over kappa t in a way represents as you will see shortly the slopes of the velocity and temperature profiles in the in the fully turbulent layer and therefore, it would amount to essentially turbulent parental number uh, and therefore, I have replaced kappa by kappa t by parental t. So, p f for the for the fully turbulent layer would be uh, uh, would be that whereas, for the fully laminar sub layer uh, uh, it would be 0 and sigma would be equal to laminar parental number. So, for the entire layer now, entire inner layer, tau tot is equal to tau wall mu effective d u dy and q tot is equal to q wall minus k effective by d t dy and therefore, if I define parental effective equal to c mu effective by k effective, then uh, it will simply amount to d t plus by d u plus by the definitions that we have. To understand this, let us say q wall is equal to uh, minus k t d t d y uh, or k effective rather, which is k plus uh, k t and tau wall is equal to mu effective d u d y, which is equal to minus k plus k t d t d y uh, and this is equal to mu plus mu t uh, sorry, uh, du dy. Then, if I take a ratio of this, you will see I get q wall uh, divided by tau wall divided by rho. Say I say this, then this will be rho here. So tau wall divided by rho would be equal to minus k plus k t divided by. Uh, mu plus mu t equal to d t by d y into 1 over d u by d y and therefore, this will become q wall divided by u tau squared equal to minus uh, uh, k plus k t divided by nu plus nu t uh, d t by d u. If I divide this now by rho C p, then I will get q wall divided by rho C p u tau squared will be equal to uh, minus uh, alpha plus alpha t uh, over nu plus nu t uh, d t by d y. I can write this now as uh, minus d t uh, divided by q wall divided by rho C p u tau is equal to uh, uh, so, so d t by d y divided by d u by d y uh, 
dt by dy dy by du dy uh, uh, so dt by dy uh, it will equal uh, uh, 1 over u tau uh, into uh, du by dy into du by dy uh, into alpha plus alpha t divided by nu plus nu t uh, which is nothing but uh, 1 over parental effective and uh, this can be written as this can be written as uh, dt plus by dy and this can be written as du plus by dy uh, and therefore I get the expression that dt plus by du plus equal to parental effective and that is what I have shown here and therefore uh, you will see here parental effective is equal to dt plus by du plus and therefore t plus would be 0 to infinity parental effective du plus and this would give us a continuous temperature law uh, as a function of u plus or function of y plus depends on how one wants to read it and uh, by comparison of this if I compare this expression t plus equal to 0 to infinity parental uh, effective du plus with sigma times u plus plus p f then I can show that p f would be simply 0 to u plus parental effective divided by t parental t minus 1 into du plus where parental effective is parental times 1 plus nu t by nu plus 1 plus alpha t by alpha and uh, nu t by nu will be given by this. Why? Because remember uh, tau wall is mu plus mu t du dy and therefore tau wall over rho which is equal to u tau squared will be nu plus nu t into du by dy and that will be equal to nu into 1 plus nu t by nu du by dy and therefore you will see that if I uh, 1 will equal uh, uh, nu by u tau squared into du by dy into 1 plus nu t by nu and this is nothing but du plus by dy plus into 1 plus nu t by nu and therefore you will notice that uh, nu t by nu will be simply 1 over du plus by dy plus minus 1. So that is what I have shown here. So we say nu t by nu is equal to du plus by dy plus raised to minus 1 minus 1. Uh, and alpha t would be simply nu t divided by parental t. This expression shows that remember du plus by dy plus is equal to 1 in the laminar sublayer and naturally therefore this will be 1 minus 1. So in the laminar sublayer nu t by nu goes to 0 and parental effective would simply go to parental number yes because that dt plus by dy plus there is equal to parental number and du plus by dy plus is 1 and therefore now the task is simply this how do we determine p f as a function of u plus well we we need the values of du plus by dy plus so either we can take it from take them from the three layer law or by which which applies only to smooth surfaces or we can use the van Dries mixing length model so that we can also allow for pressure gradient and suction and blowing for du plus by dy plus and use it here to integrate this expression to obtain p f as a function of u plus. So you will see that t plus in a way because of its definition t plus which is equal to uh, minus t minus t w rho C P U tau divided by Q W which I can also write as T W minus T into rho C P U tau divided by Q wall 
or I can speak of this as 1 over rho C P u tau as h up to distance uh, uh, y q w over t w minus t can be thought of as uh, rho C P u tau divided by heat transfer coefficient up to distance y in a boundary layer. And therefore, T plus being inverse of the conductance can now be thought of as resistance to uh, as the resistance to heat uh, heat transfer. And therefore, the relationship uh, that we have T plus equal to U uh, U plus plus P F multiplied by sigma uh, is really uh, what it indicates is since u plus is related to resistance due to momentum transfer and T plus is resistance to heat transfer, we can say P f is really the excess resistance over resistance to momentum transfer and that is the interpretation one can now give to P f. P f will be equal to 0 for parental equal to 1 uh, as a rule. What I have done is I have, in, I have integrated uh, using du plus by dy plus from van der's mixing length model and found the following. So, for example, here is the value of p f and here are the values of u plus. Up to u plus equal to phi, you have laminar sub layer and you do get uh, the resistance to heat transfer uh, is in excess of momentum transfer uh, even in the laminar sub layer. And then uh, at this is at frontal number of 50, this is at frontal number of 5. At frontal number 1, there is no, it is all 0, there is no excess resistance, and as we observed earlier, you will have perfect analogy between heat and momentum transfer. For 0 0.7, which is air, you have negative PF, which means the resistance to heat transfer is less than the resistance to momentum transfer, and in liquid metal, the resistance is even lesser than that to momentum transfer. Uh, the transitional layer would occur somewhere around y, uh, u plus of 13, end of transitional layer corresponding to y plus of 30 would occur somewhere here. And from here onwards, you have really fully turbulent layer, fully turbulent layer. And it so happens that in the fully turbulent layer, the P f value reaches almost constancy, it remaining only a function of parental number. So, we can say P f uh, in the limit is always a constant for a given frontal number and uh, that these values of pf at large values of u plus have been correlated and the most well known among these is pf infinity is equal to 9.24 divided by parental by parental t raised to 3 by 4 uh, and into another function of parental divided by parental t we can also interpret our ct parental in this manner uh, and P f infinity would be parental t C t parental by parental t pi minus pi by 4. This correlation for C t parental was obtained by Russian scientists Ikhader and Yaglom and it covered the range of parental numbers from uh, liquid metal range to uh, very very high viscous oils. For rough surfaces P f infinity uh, is given by both by Dupree and Sebesky and also by Jatilake who gave this formula. Uh, and therefore, I have given here the references to both of them uh, and uh, uh, for a rough surface, it is uh, 5.19 parental raised to 0.4 y r equivalent roughness height raised to 0.2 minus 8.48. Jayatilika's formula requires experimental information on A, uh, which is uh, meant essentially for structured surfaces. So, with this I end the lecture uh, uh, which covered the topics of transition, uh, it covered the topic of uh, uh, temperature law uh, and we found that a continuous temperature law is also possible uh, to be derived for the inner layer.